Hey Knights Media Club, are you Knight Zero One on Discord? But anyway, I, uh, whether you are or not, I hope you're well. How are you doing? Is and how is the volume of the music compared to my mic? Let me know. Maybe I could have a quick listen back. Are you? One. Yeah, that seems fine. <laughs> I did think about sharing this in um, Mass Hole or A Dramas, but I don't know if uh, it would be maybe in the general section of general text. Is there any text? General text? Do I really want to? balance, fuck it, people can watch it if they want to. Hopefully that's clear enough for people on the Discord. Spot on with the audio, nice. Hope you like the music, I don't care if you like the music, I like the music. <laughs> so today, just so you can see, I'm working on this realm here. It's called the Realm of the Hungry Ghosts. So the picture is kind of almost nearing completion. Um, I'm going to have to redo some bits of it, like uh, this section. The, the, the landscape needs more detail and the figure is too cartoony. Oh, uh, am I missing some inks? Uh, inks. They're all grey, what the hell? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what the hell? When did that happen? Uh, right, okay, let me see. Why, 
happened? What the hell? Right, so what's, what's, uh, there's an issue. Well, um, I don't know when that happened. Earlier on, I thought the inks were turned off on this layer, so I, I just kind of ignored it, but actually they're all gray. And that's a bit weird. if I can do, let's do a correction layer, um, hue, saturation, luminosity, right, luminosity, let's, oh no, that's not what I want, okay, cancel, um, right, you are going to have to go into a folder, Now we'll do a correction layer. Luminosity, there you go. I know it does seem as if the line has been changed. I wonder if I've ac accidentally done something. I mean, obviously have accidentally done something, but I don't know what, but I think that's fine. We should um, adjust line width. There we go. Thicken by one. That will do. Let's see how this works. No, do we want it thicker? Let's change it to Oh, I'm an idiot. Right, okay. Three is too thick. Let's change that up by one, which was the original value. There we go. All right, so we'll just quickly um, do this. That's fine. I might need to go back and change some of these masks very slightly. Seems fine. I don't know what happened here, you know. It's a little bit annoying. I don't like having to correct mistakes, especially when I don't know how they occurred. Oh man, I really like this album. <laughs> I'm sort of slightly buffing here in my seat. <laughs> you keep getting spinny wheel. I'm gonna have to refresh now. Let's see what's my stream health like. Uh, well, it seems fine on my end. Um, stream health is excellent. Sorry about that, mate. Um, oh, I don't know why I'm sorry because it's fine on my end. <laughs> do all of these masks probably that's kind of annoying it's not what I was wanting to do today I was wanting to finish off the proto realm I mean I'll you know get back onto that once I've done this but now that I've noticed this um, I can't carry on to have fixed it It's almost like the inks have moved, you know. I wonder if I've accidentally moved that layer. But it's not all of them. I'm, be I'm, I'm beginning to think that's what's gone on, that maybe I've accidentally moved one of these layers, right? I'm going to start locking layers, I think. Um, which perhaps I can be a little bit slack on. All right, it's no good. We're gonna to have to go in, tighten up the layer masks. Regarding the figures, 
I don't know, we'll see, see what I can do. I might just be able to move some of the underlying ink layers. Right, what's this? Uh, bow one, I think that's the top one, isn't it? Yeah. Right, okay, let's do this. might look like I'm not doing anything because it might seem like nothing is happening um, but there we go that actually shows you what I'm doing is I'm masking the areas of leaves that are overlapping where they shouldn't be and then I'm going to go back around and um, well go back on to the, uh, the lower buffs of the boughs of, of the tree and then paint in transparency so that we get rid of these white lines because they'll be masked. Right. Oh this is kind of annoying but you know I suppose it's good in a way. Um, there are always kind of disasters. See it, they have definitely moved. I wonder if I can just actually move whole thing. I wonder if I can um, T, will that work? Uh, maybe you move the router and the home phone messes with the Wi-Fi. Now moved it back. Alright, I, I don't have a phone. Um, I, I've, I've actually not had one for uh, maybe a couple of years now, actually. Um, um, but when I did, I used to t always turn the data off when I was at home. Because it would seem like if, if I'm browsing the inter internet at home, um, uh, I don't want to be using the kind of data, right? Tree, control, T, is that going to work? That's... Oh, no, that's not... Okay, that was what I wanted. That is going to work. Okay. Control T will work. Very nice. What's going on? Why are you not doing what I want? There, it's auto saving. Set it to save every half an hour. Um, all right, there we go. Unfortunately, I've got, I think my computer has a memory leak. is being very unresponsive. Oh, it's saving. Still saving. Right, can we zoom in please? Thank you. What the hell, what is going on? This is so unresponsive. What's my RAM usage? It's probably going to be something stupid. 85%, come on. <laughs> Fucking hell. Right, now, can I just nudge you up? No, it's not going to let me do that. He's gonna let me do that. I think that was it. It was just nudge, nudging up a couple of, a couple of times. Yes. Oh look at that! I think that's um, all right. That's gonna. Has that? Oh, I think that's fixed. Certainly, I think that's fixed all of the figures who are now lined up with the colours underneath, and I'm probably not going to have to go around and change any of the masks, uh, maybe down here slightly. Okay, tree, uh, is that number two? Yeah. Perhaps 
more. Let's get the new. Right, where the hell is that coming from? It might actually be just other stuff needing painting in rather than this needing painting out. coming from? That's not coming from there. Well, okay, fair enough. I'll ignore it for now. <laughs> Look for it later. Right, okay, the tree is fixed. Right, I'm not going to bother showing you what I need to change. If you're watching the stream when I'm changing it, then you'll see. Um, all right, so what am I doing? Uh, oops, stop zooming. We need fruits. Here we go. Let's uh, close you. Um, let's close you, you. Praetors, here we go. Right, pencil, darker, lighter. So I'm thinking I might do a stream tonight on my main channel. I want to have a conversation about communities and drama. Because I've noticed in, in, in my short amount of time in the auditing community and the auditing critics community. I suppose they are distinct. Um, there's a lot of interpersonal arguments that seem centred around people not liking one another. And so acting in ways that might be less than optimal, ethically speaking. Like, so I was on a guy, uh, a panel last night, SNS, which seemed particularly vitriolic, centered around a drama between um, Teresa and some other woman, L Dubs, I think, who I don't really know, who may or may not have cancer. I mean, she claims to have cancer, so uh, I'll, you know, I will just take that at face value, who has cancer, therefore. Um, so, and you get a similar thing in scam baiting communities. Oh, it seems to be in all communities that are online, you get this um, this kind of, you know, oh, you hurt me, so now I'm going to hurt you, I'm going to be nasty to you, so you can be nasty to me, etc, etc. This endless round of spite and vitriol. <laughs> so, yeah, and that interests me, I find that interesting. So I might do a stream on that.
is looking good. It's starting to look all right. Little fruits of horribleness. That produce no satisfaction when you eat them. What's happening now? A little blue circle of death. <laughs> mm. All right, that's the auto save. So what was it doing before? I think. All right, it's because I'd selected a layer, um, a, a folder, and uh, it sort of has a slight wobble when you do that. Ah, oh, this next tune, I love it. I really like it. There's only me and one other person who's who's watching the stream, but I hope you like this tune too. <laughs> the one that's coming up, this one. What a great tune. Come on, come on software. Right, there we go. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> right. More on here. Lighter, I think. Right. Yep. All right. Now, let's uh, fingertip is good, I think. Yeah. Let's blur this up slightly. Not blurring exactly, but just kind of blending it slightly. Well, I mean, blending and blurring sort of do the same thing, I suppose, just in slightly different ways, maybe. I don't know. I don't actually know how a software works. <laughs> but then you don't need to know how software works in order to use it. You just need to know how to use it. And to be honest, I barely know how to do that. I've not had it very long, a couple of months, maybe two or three months. These are too light. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Good right, tip. Let's muddy this up a little.
Hey, UFO pilot. Right. I think it's about time we start on the Hungry Ghosts now. Um, everything in this layer, uh, in this section, is going to be monochrome. There's going to be no colour in it. So, uh, Praetors. Right. right now, let me see. Is that... That's my temporary lip. Oh, that was just for him. Right, so uh, let's grab Can I grab everything on here? No, well, that's kind of annoying. Uh, right, uh, annoying, right, merge delay below, you will delete, that's the ink layers, I think that needs to be, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> here we go, right, let's, you don't need to, oh we do need to, control Z, you are eyes and mouth, I mean, how often, how often do you hear a techno tune take a swerve into swing? <laughs> I mean, I know it's not techno. How often do you hear electronic music? <laughs> That's kind of some demented genius at play there, I think. Now... No, you know what? I want them to have smooth skin. So we're going to use an airbrush. And All right. I really should... Um, I really should get my head around the fill functions and whatnot. I'm kind of, I'm a really bad software user <laughs> in that. Um, even though I'm not very good at it, I tend to stick to methods that emulate um, traditional drawing. <laughs> There are much more efficient ways of doing it, I think. Uh, the eyes, you know what, we need to 
fill you in, actually. Um, the rest of you with a pale, very pale grey, maybe a bit darker. Yeah, kind of. Uh, I suppose um, conceptually, where we are. Let me pause the music. <laughs> Let me pause the music. Right. So, I don't know if you if you know what this image is. It's it's the Tibetan Wheel of Life, as it's commonly called. 
should really be called the wheel of becoming um the bhava chakra chakra means wheel and bhava means uh become like to come into being or to de uh, develop um and so these six sections here uh, which are the ones that I'm working on at the moment, they are um, the six realms that you can be born into. Uh, and you can either look at them as, you know, uh, traditionally, like the kind of, you know, discrete realms that you can be born into or discrete, you know, distinct states you can be born into, like, you know, heaven realm at the top where the gods are. The realm to the right of that is the realm of the titans or the jealous gods. Um the realm below that, uh, kind of four o'clock, is the um, realm of the animals. Uh, down here at the bottom, we have the hell realm. And then up here, we have what's known as the realm of the hungry ghosts and then the human realm. Um, hungry ghosts are said to be creatures who are continuously hungry and thirsty. Um, but they've got, uh, um, well, they're supposed to have really tiny mouths and really huge stomachs. Uh, and whatever they eat turns to kind of rocks and um, spikes in their stomachs and whatever they drink turns to, you know, acid um, and is undrinkable. Uh, so I suppose if we were to look at them as psychological states, the God realm could be said to be, um, you know, those who have really pleasant lives, you know, they're very wealthy, they're very famous, um, you know, where nothing seems to go wrong, everything seems to go right, they never have to kind of worry about anything. Uh, yeah. Then the Titans, you could liken those to um, people who are really competitive, you know, so like businessmen perhaps, or um, athletes maybe could be Titans. Um, but where you got that kind of competitive, um, combative attitude, uh, that, that could be, you know, said to be the Titan realm. Um, the animal realm in terms of psychology uh, could be just, you know, people who are only interested in the animalistic pursuits, right? You know, sex, sleep, food. Um, yeah. So the hell realm are those who are in states of intense suffering. Um, and I, to be honest, I include, and I, I don't think this is traditional at all, and I'm not, I'm not sure that there are any Buddhist thinkers who would kind of think like this, but I include the demons uh, as as creatures who are suffering in hell, um, not just the beings who are being tortured. But, you know, yeah, like I say, that's probably certainly not traditional. Uh, the hungry ghost realm, psychologically, um, could be those who are, like, addicted to substances, um, yeah, I suppose drug addicts would be a really good example of what, what a hungry ghost is. Um, and then up here you have the human realm, which is the realm where it's said to be most most advantageous to be born into because it's kind of the easiest to practice there. Um, and psychologically, I suppose that's... Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, a kind of state of mind in which... Uh, you're not being driven by your basic instincts um, and instead you're uh, kind of trying to turn your mind towards the truth, um, which in this expression would be Buddhism, I suppose, uh, but it can be anything. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, I suppose there is a kind of slightly, you know, Boschian feel to the hungry ghosts anyway, I think. Um, yeah yeah all right i hope that was interesting for you <laughs> no, no, wrong one. right Oh, right, okay, I haven't masked all of these yet. Fair enough, let's do this one then. He appears to have lost his shoulder there. Let's um, add that in. Thanks for the <laughs> Well, you know, 
in another life I was probably a teacher. <laughs> Uh, maybe three points. Yeah, that'll do a thing. So, I don't know. I've done masking on stream before. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. That's what I'm doing now. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm selecting this figure. Well, I'm kind of tracing around the inks. And then on the folder, I'm going to create a layer mask to mask everything outside of the selection. So we'll do that now. Um, then in the folder, I'm going to create a layer, which I'm going to select a white. I'm going to choose um, a nice thick marker uh, just to fill it in. So now I can see where the mask needs tidying up um, using a thinner pen. Set fine pixels. We will first of all uh, fill in the bits that need filling in, like here. Maybe a leg could do with some strengthening. <laughs> it's a very thin leg. Okay, that's looking good. And then we'll select the transparent. And we're going to just go around the edge, a bit thinner maybe. Removing all the stray bits of the white layer underneath. The great thing about using masks, of course, is that they're non destructive, um, which is very useful. It means that whatever is placed underneath the mask, you know, if it's an image or whatever, it'll be cropped out, but uh, the image itself is unaffected. Alright, while we're up here, let's just. using masks is it means I can sort of be a lot freer with my strokes like because I don't have to worry about keeping inside the lines because um, you know obviously whatever is masked is not going to appear um, I've only just recently like, I, I, you know recently discovered them but then I suppose I'm not really a digital artist well, I'm not an artist of any sort. <laughs> My argument to people who say they can't draw is, yeah, well, neither can I. I don't let that stop me. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Nice, that's masked up. So now, if I say just paint this in, in red, um, look at that, very nice. It won't won't go anywhere except where I want it to. So again, uh, spray, I'm gonna go halfway. I wonder if I can fill it, actually. Um, paint unfilled areas. Right, in that case. Right. Yeah, no, that works. Why don't I just rub it out? I'm an idiot. Egypt. 
Egypt. Right, this is a little experiment. Because I'm aware that this is the same with all software. There's always loads of fucking tools that I never use. So let's just um, select this, gray fill, paint unfilled areas, do it. That's not done. <laughs> Refer only to editing layer. All right. Gew it. Look at that, very nice. <laughs> that was surprisingly easy. Now let me see what we're doing. Let's do shadows first. Um, so ten. What's this? Uh, but the boundaries in the wheel are not so sharp in reality. So um, it depends on how you look at it. If you take a traditional view that the realms are discrete places that you're born into. You know, so that when you're in hell, you're in a like like a physically discrete place that you know has its own laws of physics and reality and whatnot. Um, then they would be sharp, like because you're there for the lifetime, right? If you're taking the psychological model, which is the model that I tend to use, um, and when I say tend to use, that is the model that I use, <laughs> then. Uh, yeah, then um, you you kind of move from, um, you know, realm to realm, moment to moment, right? So you, so you could be in a kind of, you know, really blissed out heavenly state at one moment, stub your foot and get really angry and suddenly you're in the hell realm, right? Like kind of relatively speaking. Um, so yeah, they're, they're not so sharp. It, 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 if you've taken the psychological model, uh, the edges are very kind of blurry in a way because you move from one to the other. Um, and I think people probably have predispositions. So, you know, somebody might be predisposed towards, you know, say, uh, uh, being addictive, having an addictive personality. And so, you know, they could be hungry ghosts predominantly. Um, but every now and again, they might, you know, enter kind of genuine you know genuinely bl blissed out states and be in the heaven realm or yeah so people would move from realm to realm so when i'm saying um like for example that a businessman is a good example of a titan that's not to say that like in a way that's a state of mind and you move from can you have a hungry ghost in it not really like because so i think if you're taking the psychological model, the hungry ghost realm is, is largely about craving, whereas the hell realm is largely about suffering um, and anger. Uh, so, um, and it's like, yeah, you might be experiencing kind of both in a way, like you might be, you know, uh, a junkie who really wants to fix and also be really angry that you can't get one. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Nothing is kind of fixed in a way. Like nothing is fixed. Everything is fluid. Everything is always in a continuous state of flux. Which is a why I think I prefer the psychological model over the traditional model. One, it means you don't have to have any kind of magical thinking involved. Um, and you know, you don't need to believe in rebirth to be a Buddhist. You know, the, the Buddha himself said so. Um, so it's like you don't need the magical thinking stuff in order to practice you know um, certainly I think a lot of the meditation well okay yeah the sadhana practices that came later I suppose they are very Buddhist <laughs> but a lot of this calming practices you know you don't actually need to be a Buddhist to do them um, they're just techniques to train the mind you know, mindfulness of breathing and whatnot. <laughs> Funnily enough, in, in some schools of Buddhist thought, like, you know, because there's lots of schools of Buddhist thought, and there's, um, you get lots of different models that kind of occur within them. And 
in one of them there's this concept of Buddha seeds um, and I think it's probably from the Mahayana tradition like um, Indian uh, and according to that kind of model you know according to all of the models the best realm to be in is the human realm because that gives you the right mixture of pleasure and pain to allow for practice like spiritual practice whatever form that might take um, and then the next most kind of beneficial realm to be in in terms of from the Buddhist perspective and certainly from uh, the Buddha seed perspective is um, hell actually funnily enough you know because uh, suffering spurs you on to make changes one of the least useful realms to be in from a Buddhist perspective is heaven <laughs> So it kind of runs counter, like certainly to a lot of Western or you know, the monotheistic traditions where you're trying to get into heaven. In Buddhism, getting into heaven is seen as being really, really, really unhelpful, because <laughs> you know when you're in heaven, you've got no reason to practice, right? I think the, um, I'm wondering if the reason why uh, you're getting hell associations with um, uh, with this is because it's um, monochrome. And I think, like in um, in ancient Greece, like wasn't the underworld meant to be kind of really grey? Like everything's kind of just grey. Um, maybe I've gotten that wrong. All right, now, no, see, yes. Uh, it's auto saving again. Damned auto save. Oh, I need to make more. I need to make tea or something. Getting the first at the time of it. Half twelve. Auto save, auto save, does whatever auto save does. Can it swing from the web? No, it can't. It's auto save. Look out. It is auto save. So I've been working on a new VM, UFO Pilot, um, a Windows 7 VM that I'm going to use for my more elderly characters um it's been a while since i've done any scan baiting and i kind of want to see if i can goad because it's windows 7 so obviously it's got siski on it so um i want to see if i can goad a scammer into siskiing me i'm going to see how many times i can get him to siski me in a single stream <laughs> I'm also thinking of getting a voice changer. I'd quite like to make myself sound like, you know, a really old man or a really old granny or something. Um, I think uh, just to get, you know, you need the old person wobble. I, I haven't really got that. Not yet, anyway. So consequently, my Wilbur, I think he sounds a bit young still, really. It doesn't have that kind of really old man. You know what I mean about the old man wobble, the old person voice wobble. <laughs> so I'm thinking of getting. I might. I, I'm. I've got my eye on um, the Roland VT4. It's a, vo a hardware voice changer. Because software voice changers are shit. 
I, I, they just like, into, I, I would just rather not bother rather than use them to be honest. But um, uh, I know someone that has a VT4 and they make themselves sound like an old woman. It sounds pretty realistic. Now, admittedly, I've not heard, I'm not sure that I've heard their voice uh, um, without the voice changer. I think I've probably only heard it with, but still it sounds pretty good. Roland VT4, yeah, VT4. Um, they're a couple of hundred quid or something, something like that. I mean, I think maybe 170 something from 170 to you know a couple of hundred, depending on where you get them from. I think Kit Boger uses them now. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not that keen on Kit Boger. Um, I think largely because he doesn't allow scam baiting discussions in his discord because he says it's illegal and actually it isn't I mean it's legally grey in the UK but it's not illegal to scam bait it's not illegal to ring someone up <laughs> and waste their time but, you know but, so and I kind of get the sense that actually it's for him it's it's definitely a commercial enterprise scam baiting and that's fine you know um Actually, I haven't got an issue with that. Good luck to him. I hope he makes lots of money. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I actually don't have an issue with that at all. Except for the fact that he doesn't allow... Like, I joined this server, and he doesn't let you talk about scam baiting. <laughs> I just find that... I don't know. And he's... Uh, yeah, and the alleged reason is that, you know, they don't allow discussions of illegal activities now i'm a mod on tls like so i i kind of get that um you know not allowing discussions of illegal things but, but scam baiting isn't i mean is it illegal i suppose strictly speaking it is um it's kind of harassment isn't it Why, oh, idiot, wrong there, come on. And then let's uh, blur the edge. Save. Oh, 
Well, yeah, right, exactly. Like, I think it's morally, uh, it's legally grey in the UK because, strictly speaking, it is technically harassment, right? And there is a statute against harassment in the UK. But as long as you're not doing anything egregious, like, no one's ever going to be prosecuted for it. Yeah, exactly, if it's a prank style. If you're doing, you know, if you're ratting scammers, that's a whole different thing. And I don't get into that, you know, I don't rat, I, I, I don't kind of get access to their webcams or anything like that. I, I just scam bait, you know. Um, but yeah, it's disingenuous to say it's scam baiting. And I think it's purely so that he can maintain his, you know, um, money-making abilities. Because I think Twitch maybe is very strict in terms of what it will allow or not allow its partners to do, maybe. Um, yeah. And in certain respects, it's like, yeah, you know what, fair enough. If you want to earn a living, scam baiting, you know, if you can do that, fair play to you. Um, but, yeah. And he stayed on his server for like, um, it was less than an hour, half an hour or something. <laughs> But I've heard he uses a VT4. And that's where all that started, wasn't it? how weird it is not having music on to be honest I tend to actually work in silence most of the time and I don't actually often play music when I'm working um, but when I'm streaming sometimes I feel there needs to be noise <laughs>
It's interesting, I haven't given these guys ears. <laughs> I've only just noticed they don't have ears. <laughs> oh my word, okay. So they're deaf. All of these hungry ghosts are deaf. <laughs> They are probably meant to have ears, aren't they? Probably. Exactly. Why do you need ears? You don't need ears to not be able to eat or drink. <laughs> uh -huh. Alright, let's see. Let's make it brush a bit bigger. So we get some nice smooth. Looking good, I think. Yeah, nice. Let's do a highlight. Let's make it again bigger, say 40. No, smaller, right, 20. Let's do, and uh, not so light. Um, Good, I think. far too uh, brush density. Let's turn you down. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's starting to look all right now. Oops, oops I'm an idiot.
right, wanna you I think I might leave it there. Um yeah. Uh fairly short stream. I might come back and do some more later. Uh I might not, we'll see. I've got things to do today. Um Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh next time I will be um continuing on with the Praetor Realm before making a start on the human realm. Uh, if you're around on Saturday night, 8 p.m. Um, EST, that's uh, 1 a.m. Sunday morning for the people in the UK. If you're in Europe, you might need to add an hour to that. Um, I'm doing an interview with uh, Joe Pometto from um, Common Sense Academy on my main channel, and we're going to be discussing uh, a new ordinance that's been enacted in Tucson. Um, and that's to do with First Amendment auditors. So if you're interested in that topic, uh, yeah, uh, maybe you should um, join join my stream on my main panel and uh, hear what could be a very interesting conversation. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you next time.